but you've spent some time around some some interesting as, were you even in the business yet when you were driving andre around the first time he came through detroit or were you were you still a, a photographer i was the chic photographer then i was and, the chic photographer and i was writing the body press program here how did they how did they uh, uh, break the news to you that you were going to be driving around this seven foot four giant that everybody was going gobsmacked for for the first time well, the very first uh, time, you know, I met him, he, you know, was at the Kobo show. He worked the Kobo show and he needed a ride back to his hotel. And it's like he didn't stay at the Sheridan Cadillac uh, where most of the boys stayed. He stayed at the American Hotel. I guess he got a weekly rate or something like that, because when he first came here, he was here for three weeks. Uh, you know, and, you know, Andre, he moved from territory to territory back in those days. So it's like I drove him back to his hotel, and then he goes, hey, boss, you know, Toronto, you know, tomorrow, you know. <laughs> like I wasn't planning on going to Toronto, you know, for the show, but, uh, you know, I had a big Ford LTD at the time, so he fit in there comfortably. And it's like, well, okay, the next day I drove him up to Toronto, we did the Toronto show. And then the next day we had Lima, Ohio. And then the next day, you know, so for the, you know, three weeks straight, I drove Andre, you know, all over the territory. And it was an, another one of those eye-opening experiences for a young kid. Did I mean, you get, did you get to experience the, the famous giant fart that has been talked about and made legend? No, never got to do that. He was a gentleman in front of me. He must you know, have liked you. <laughs> he did. Uh, you know, you know, a couple of stories on, you know, you know, Andre anyway, um, we're in Dayton, Ohio one night. And after the show in Ohio, you know, they really didn't have too many, uh, say party stores open at night. So what you could do in Ohio was go to a bar and I mean, you could drink there and stuff, but you can also buy beer to take out. So, you know, Andre, you know, wants some beer. So we drove a little ways away from the arena so we wouldn't be near any of the fans. And we stopped, saw a bar, and Andre gets a case of beer. So, okay, he's got his case of beer. We get back in the car, and it's like now we've got, uh, oh, three and a half to four hour drive back to Detroit. So from, you know, Dayton, Ohio, we hit Toledo, which is a little over two hours. Andre's out of beer. And it's like two in the morning. And he says, hey, boss, I need beer. I go, Andre, it's like 2 in the morning. Where are we going to get beer now? There's nothing up. Boss, I need beer. It's like, oh, my, you know, what am I going to do? I can't pull off. There ain't nowhere. And as soon as he said it again, I need more beer, here comes a Stroh's beer truck, which was a famous <laughs> beer here in Detroit. And it pulls alongside of us. Andre got all excited. He opens up the passenger side of my car door, and he's waving his arm for this driver to pull over so he can get some beer. <laughs> so, well, the driver didn't stop. He didn't get no beer. And for the next hour and a half, Andre wasn't a happy camper until he got back to Detroit. You know, if it had been 10 years later, he would have recognized Andre and he would have stopped. But as it was, he thought there's a giant demon human. <laughs> Waving at yep. me out of that Ford LTD. I'm not pulling over. Well, here's one. When he came back to the territory again, oh, I'd say maybe a year later, same thing. You know, boss Dave had to drive Andre around, and I didn't have no problem with that. You know, we had fun together. And it's like after a Kobo show, you know, we had to go up to Toronto the next day to work the show for the Tunnies. So Andre hadn't been to, you know, uh, hadn't really done the sightseeing thing in Toronto before. So he asked me if we can go up early and if I can show him and drive him around the city of Toronto and show him, you know, what it's like. And I said, sure. So we left Detroit early, like about six in the morning, and we got up there about nine thirty, ten o'clock. So we checked into the Chelsea Hotel, which was a few blocks from Maple Leaf Gardens, and we walked down to Young Street. And the thing in Canada back in those days is, is that if your establishment was open on Saturday, you couldn't be open on Sunday. Or if you were open on Sunday, you couldn't be open on Saturday. That was their law back then. But 
restaurants were a different, you know, they were exempt from that. Because people so got to eat I, every day. Yeah. So me yeah. and Andre, we got, we're going to go for breakfast. So we walk into this little diner. I mean, there's no regular seating. There's only seats at a counter. I'd say like 10 seats at a counter, you know, the little stools, you know, the little round stool things. So we walk in there and me and Andre, you know, we're the only two in there. So we sit at the, you know, at the counter and it's a Chinese couple that own the place and their eyes got as big as, you know, saucers seeing, you know, Andre, like everybody else did. So anyway, this little lady in broken Chinese and broken English comes over to take our order. So I order up, you know, the usual bacon, eggs, you know, stuff like that. So Andre, in his voice, you know, he looks at the little lady and he says, I want half the name. I want one pound bacon. I want half loaf toast. And this lady looked at him like he was an alien. She didn't understand a word he was saying. So anyway, you know, I, I said, Andre, you know, tell her again. So he goes, I want half dozen eggs. I want one pound bacon. I want half loaf toast. She nods, goes in the back. And you can see her husband in the back, you know, through the see-through, you know, the wall there where he's cooking. So like 10 minutes later, here comes our food. She plops down mine, you know, my bacon, eggs, toast, everything in front of me, everything's fancy. Sets down Andre's plate in front of him, and he looked at me, I looked at him, we looked at his plate, we looked at her, and we started belly laughing uncontrollably. And we just couldn't stop laughing. And we looked at it again, and this lady's standing there. She's wondering, what the heck are these two laughing about? Well, Andre's plate, which she put down in front of him, was a half an egg, a little bit of egg, one piece of bacon, (laughs) and a half a slice of toast on this plate. So it's like, you know, we looked at that and she, you know, so I'm, you know, trying to explain to this lady. I says, no, 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 no. He wants a half dozen eggs. And I hold up six fingers. He wants six eggs and he wants a pound of bacon. And I'm making like a, you know, gesture, like a mound of you know bacon. And I says, he wants a half a loaf of toast. So I'm, you know, you know, put my hands out like, you know, the bread loaf and like half of that. She looked at me, she looked at at him and says, you going to eat that? (laughs) And we laughed so hard again, we couldn't stop. And it's like, you know, he got his food and it was like one of the funniest experiences of breakfast I've ever had. Huh. It it actually, it would seem more plausible that Andre would eat what he ordered than would eat what she brought him when you would look at it. But maybe she, you know, she was, she was verklempt. Is what yeah. she was. Oh, I wish I had my camera just to take a picture of that plate. It was it was just too hilarious. 